Hi everyone, we are back with one of the best phases of this activity called the Moon Challenge. We are getting a great response from everyone and people are also sending in their best pictures to us. This is a picture sent by a youngster Abhinya Dandekar in which the moon has been captured with Venus. This is not day 6 but it is from an earlier evening. Lovely colors with the red flowing from one corner into the blue of the night in the other corner. There's another picture by Ankit Bhandari in which he has captured a cityscape with the moon and Venus. Well, let's now move on to how the moon looked like on day 6. It was about 25% illuminated, which basically means it's at a 25% phase. It's about a quarter of its way to full moon. I have been asked this question about the zoomed images which we have been showing you. So they look a little different from how the moon appears to you in the sky. Again, I'll be using some pictures by uh, Anirudh Thakur. So this is how the moon might look to you in the sky. What happens with the telescope is that the image, of course, gets magnified or as we popularly call it zoomed, but it also gets flipped so that you can see it in a very different perspective. Here it looks like it is right out of a sci-fi movie. The sun is brightly illuminating it from top. Well, in space there is no up or down and it's just that when we see the moon in the sky, what you see here is the uh, lower portion is lit. Well, to us the lower portion means the portion towards the west where the sun has just set and the light is still reflecting off the moon and coming to us. It doesn't matter if we flip it over because that is only changing the perspective. It's still, this is brightly lit side is still pointing at the sun and that's why we are able to see these beautiful features. Of course, today's pictures feature more uh, breathtaking areas of the moon. Let's now have a closer look. So we have this huge crescent right now. And I personally think we cannot just look at it overall and find, see the details or enjoy the details. So let's go a little bit deeper. We'll start with this corner rectangle in the north side of the moon. So as we zoom in, we are looking at the north of the moon. This way is the north pole. The sharpness is very good. Although there, there might be some artifacts in the pic photography here uh, where the pic two pictures have been joined. This is actually made out of several pictures joined together and so therefore you can get such good resolution. Before we begin with the description of uh, various points on the moon, I would again remind you or introduce you to new terms that appear in the naming of moon locations. We have lakes. There are lakes, there are palace, there are marshes and there are of course mountains. Previously we have seen seas and craters. Let's see where we find lakes etc. Let's of course not forget the reference point. Mare Crisium will be there until a bit after the full moon and it will always be something we'll, which we'll remember as one of the first things we saw on the moon. And we have yesterday's two locations, the Atlas and Hercules craters. These will assure you that we are still looking at the north of the moon. Well, as more and more of the moon gets illuminated, we'll start seeing other objects which are in the shadows. Here we have started seeing Mare Frigoris, the sea of gold. We also have Lacus Mortis, Lacus, a lake of death. We also have Lacus Somniorum, the lake of sleep. On its shores is the giant crater Posidonius. This is about a hundred kilometers wide. Can you imagine that? Such a huge crater which then leads us onto the Taurus Mountains. This whole area here is called the Taurus Mountains. 
Amongst other interesting features on the moon is the marsh, which is called the Palace Somni. Again, the marsh of sleep. All these names may make you a little sleepy to think of it. Well, it is cold on the moon and uh, it's, it's reflected very well in these names. Now let's go on to some known areas from yesterday. We have the Mare Crisium again and the crater Langrinus. Now you can see that the sharp features of these have kind of faded away because the, of the sunlight reflecting off them more and more. They hardly have any shadows to show us the, these contrastive features that they had. But then we have these other uh, areas starting to become visible. Of course, we have seen the Sea of Fertility and the Sea of Nectar was partially visible yesterday. But on its shores, you can see a lot of lovely uh, features coming up, which I'm sure you're looking forward to finding out about. Let me also tell you that there is another very important area on the moon, which is uh, visible in this picture partially, but we'll see more of it on the next day. This is the Sea of Tranquility. Maybe you have heard of it before. However, now let's go towards the south. We'll follow this rectangle towards the south and see details of it. So in this picture, we are looking towards almost to the south pole of the moon. And of course, to start with, let's start with these two lovely craters on top here, which I'm sure you are wanting to know about. So these are the twin craters, Theophilus and Cyrillus. Again, one crater formed on top of another, both with these lovely uh, mountains visible at the middle of them. To add to the list of types of features on the moon, we also have something called Rupis, a cliff or a fault line. And this particular one that I am showing you here is called the Rupis Altai. What you're seeing here it's a straight ridge. It's not probably sloping like the walls of a crater. It's just a straight wall, a ridge which may be formed because of the breaking up of a crater wall or maybe just because of seismic activity. There are several other places on the moon where you will find such cliffs and they may be more prominent in those areas. Other than this, you might remember Janssen, the crater with these multiple impacts which have happened on top of it. This is a very old crater. Just next to it is another crater called Pitiscus. I'm telling you about this particular one because of a reason, although there happen to be several other very interesting uh, craters all around. Now it's not possible to tell you about all of these or to tell you the names of all of these. So I'm just going to stick to those which will serve some purpose in my commentary. You see, these craters can be used to find other craters or other features on the moon. So we sometimes go crater hopping to find some important features or some interesting features for ourselves. In this case, I have used the Rupes Altai to find a small crater which is barely visible in this picture. I hope this is the one that I wanted to show to you. And this is called Celsius. It is right at the edge of the shadow and named after the famous scientist Celsius who designed the Celsius scale. Well, it's, a, it's not a very important crater, but I just wanted to tell you about this because Celsius is a temperature scale and on the moon in the same crater, you might as well have 120 degrees Celsius temperatures in the well-lit areas, while the shadows may have temperatures going down to minus 170 degrees. That's quite a range of different in temperatures. And we talk about them in degrees Celsius. At the brighter areas, if you have some water, it might boil. And in the darker areas, <laughs> it will be minus 173 below zero degrees, which is the freezing temperature of water. So such are the conditions on the moon. However, what I'm talking about is in craters closer to the central latitudes of the moon. 
if you go further down south into these craters which are almost close to the south pole of the moon for example this let's say this crater Manzinus it might be a place which is forever in the shadow or at least some portions of it may forever be in shade this means that if at all there was ice or water in it it would never have seen the sun or it would never have evaporated moreover whatever hit this place and caused this crater the components of it might never have evaporated or faced any kind of erosion these would be the really interesting places and that is why space scientists are so interested in the south pole or the north pole of the moon in fact i am very proud to say that the indian spacecraft chandrayaan 2 had sent its lander the first that india had developed it was called vikram and it was meant to land somewhere here between this crater and somewhere here so that it could find out more details about the area and its water content of course it did not succeed in its first go but we are all looking forward to the future missions which will take us to the south pole of the moon and give us more details about these particular mysteries that we want to get the answers to so there is an exciting time coming up for space exploration and these are the places which will most probably be the more important ones that humankind would like to explore we will keep sharing with you such beautiful pictures and such important information about the moon in the moon challenge you have to promise that you'll keep joining us as you continue with the moon challenge you should share with us whatever you see or whatever you experience if you have very good pictures taken do feel free to send them to scipop at gmail.com otherwise also don't forget to share your experiences with us with the tag moon challenge on any social media we will be back soon with the next day's moon in which we will be featuring an area on the moon which is very famous either you must have heard of it or at least you must know of an important happening which happened there so keep looking at the moon and stay with the moon challenge